So I'm just going to share something today. I want to pray. I believe the Lord is uh, going to help us, help us today. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 13. It says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. Just stop right there. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. This is not referring to nearness to our doctrine. This is not referring to nearness to our church bylaws. Uh, we have not come near to our end time theology of eschatology. Uh, that's not what it's referring to when it says that we have been brought near. It says we who were once far away have been brought near. And what we've been brought near to is God himself. Hallelujah. The blood of, the blood of Christ has made a way so that we who are far away have been brought near. And whenever he is near, uh, everything that is contrary to him, everything that is contrary to his nature, everything that is not him has to give way. Praise the Lord. That's why whenever Jesus showed up, things would change. Because he is near now. And when he is near, all things that are not like him have to give way. The Son of Man was revealed to destroy the works of the evil one. Hallelujah. So today we have been brought near. And everything that is not like him, everything that does not smell like him, every demonic assignment, every pain and discouragement, every depression and every lie, every sickness and disease, we serve notice today. Because, not because we are great preachers, but because he himself Hallelujah. By means of his blood has brought us near to him. Hallelujah. Whenever Jesus shows up, things happen. Can I get amen? amen. Now look, Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. And verse number 17 it says, One day... As he was teaching, this is Jesus, Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem were sitting there. And the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Hallelujah. And the power of the Lord was present or the, and the Lord's power to heal was in him. I like this version better. This version says that in New King James, it says, and the power of God was present. Hallelujah. And it puts a little bit of twist on this thing of the power of God. If the power of God was there, it means that maybe sometimes the power of God could also not be there. Almost like the power of God can come and the power of God can leave. Um, so, you know, let's look at the picture together. The, the, the Pharisees had come from Jerusalem. They're here. And Jesus is here. The Pharisees that had come from Ju Jerusalem are, is here. The Pharisees that had come from Galilee is here. And the power <laughs> of God to heal the sick was also here. Welcome. So welcome, uh, Pharisees from Galilee. Nice to have you. Welcome, Pharisees from Jerusalem. Good to see you. Power of God, welcome. So nice to have you with us today. Why have you come, power of God? Oh, power of God comes to heal the sick. Power of God comes to drive out everything that is not like God. The power of God was present. Hallelujah. That means they could have had a meeting where the power of God was not present. But not in this case. On that day, the power of God was present. And when the power of God is present, it's a lot different. It, it, it changes the atmosphere. Things happen. And, and so on this Sunday, may the power of God be present. Amen. Hallelujah. May, may not only Gashi Intana and Mrs. So-and-so, and welcome first-time visitors. So nice to have you. Welcome Emma, Abba, Kavi. Thank you. Sammy, so good to have you today. Power of God, welcome. Oh, so nice to have you with us today. The power of God was present. Hallelujah. The power of God is present. Dare I say the power of God is present. 
and, and, and the power of God is present to heal the sick. The power of God is present, hallelujah, to, ch to, to change circumstances. The power of God is present to help. He's here, he's here now. He's here now. Now, now uh, this idea, I was really, it took me somewhere. If the power of God is present or can be present and not present, yeah, if, the, if they have to record that the power of God was present, you see, it begs the question, what are the qualifications uh, to ensure he is present? Uh, do we sing the song and he comes? Mm? Do we all wear the same color? So he comes. Eh? Everybody wear red today so that the power of God will be present. Why? Because the power of God prefers the color red. No, no, no. There's some kind of a qualification. He doesn't, if, if, it, if, he, if he was present, there has to be a reason. There has to be something that drew him in. <sighs> Hallelujah. And so may we find that secret ingredient to pull him in, to visit our lives. To touch us in the place where we need it most. To heal and deliver. Amen? Amen. Power of God was present. So I want to just give a few ideas to help us uh, step into this place where the power of God is present. In Matthew chapter 13 and verse number 58. 57. Let's start in 57. It says, and they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, only in his hometown and in his own house is a prophet without honor. And he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. Hmm. So I want us to connect fifth, fifth, verse 57, the first part of verse 57 and uh, the, the 58. It says, and they took offense at him uh, and he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. So, so what we see here is the connection between faith and offense. Uh, they took offense and they did not have many, much faith. And because they did not have much faith, he could not perform many miracles. There. In other words, the power of God was not present or not as present uh, as it was when he was with this meeting with the Pharisees and the, are, are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. So the power of God is connected to faith. In fact, Jesus never said, my power has made you whole. My strength has made you whole. I came from heaven. I'm the son of God. I made you whole because of where I came from. In every situation, when Jesus healed people, he always connected his power to their faith. Go in peace. Your faith has made you whole. Yeah? Your faith, not my power. So he has the power, okay? But when the faith plugs into the power is when the miracles happen. But what we see in this verse is that they did not have faith because they were offended. Uh -huh. So offense and faith go together. And if we can overcome the offense, yeah, we can step into faith and when we step into faith, the power of God is present, right? Some of us have hit a roadblock in our progress with God because we have not grown past our last offense. And that means your faith will be limited by that offense and the power of God will be limited by that faith. But today we overcome every offense. You know, one of the things that I am specializing in uh, as a pastor of a church of Jesus Christ, I'm an a offense specialist. Hmm? Not only in the philosophical study of offense, but in being offensive. Uh, I, one of my jobs as a pastor is to offend. Did you know that? Yeah, you know, I'm a very nice guy. I, I'm a good guy, I think. And I found out that the times when I even try to be so polite and behave so wonderfully, I end up offending those very people. And it's because it's more than what I try to do. It is the calling that demands offense to take place so that people can overcome and enter into faith and enter into the blessing. Mm -hmm. But there's really something to this because um, Jesus 
was the stumbling stone. That if you can handle the stumbling stone, eh, you can handle the cornerstone. The stumbling stone will always come before the cornerstone. And some of us love Jesus, but we hate so-and-so, we have opinions about so-and-so, and we don't think we should talk to so-and-so because of their belief system, where they came from, their history being different from my history. And that's where denomination comes from. The church is very divided now. It's not because of truth, it's because of truth plus offense. In fact, one of the things that I've been having to study is the stories of church history. And I will, I've been amazed at my studies of church history to see how many of the great theologians that have shaped the history of the, 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 the doctrine of the church, how offended they were in formulating their opinions and their doctrines. Like particularly Severus of Antioch, I had to study about him. And I was like, are you serious? Because he would make an amazing theological statement about the nature of Christ. Hallelujah. But then he would spend another three pages going off on his opponents to tell them how crazy, how back, back, backward they are, you know, how, how foolish they are not to receive. I said, Jesus. Yeah? And, and now we have the theology. Offense will, will, will maybe impress people. Uh, uh, theology will be, can impress people, but if it's built on offense, it's building a room where everybody is present but the power of God. May the Lord help us today. May the Lord help us today to overcome offense. Yeah. Uh, and if I have offended you today, uh, you're welcome. Yeah, offense is a part of your growth trajectory in the kingdom of God. And sometimes you need to turn around and visit again the thing that has been bothering you the most so that the power of God can be present. It will be difficult to build faith with offense. Eh? It's as we over overcome offense that we step into faith and that we step into faith. Remember that Syrophoenician woman came to Jesus and she said, please heal my daughter. I need the power of God in my life. I need the power of God to free my daughter. She suffers from a demon. And Jesus did not even look at her. He turned around. And he said, uh, it's not right to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. Now, if, if I was that woman, if I was that woman, eh, I came to you, Jesus, author of life, son of God, understanding that you have the power to deliver me from my help. I did not go to Caesar. I did not go to Herod. I didn't go to any other power. I came to you and you call me a dog. I'm going to go to Fana Broadcasting and tell them, I went to Jesus and he called me a dog. Post it on my social media uh, handle. Uh, hashtag hate Jesus. Crazy Jesus. Uh, backwards Jesus. And then underneath it put a small caption. I went humbly to the master to get some help in my need. And he called me a dog. Uh, share, 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 share. Uh, it, it, was, it was a stumbling block. Uh, dog. And she said, yes, master. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the table. And Jesus said to her, because of such an answer, go, your daughter has been made. In other words, the power of God has visited your life because you overcame the offense. Hallelujah. How are you, how are you doing with your offense? Um, I, I, I'm not, I, I say I'm an expert in this because this is how God has grow, grown, grown me up. Is that good English? He has grown me up in, the, in this way. I have a degree not only from a Bible school, I have a degree from the school of offense because I graduated. I graduated at the crumb level eh, and I experienced the power of God in my life. Can I tell you my testimony? Actually, I have many testimonies along these lines, but there's one that I, I always go back to because I think it becomes, maybe it might help somebody today. When I finished, it, finished Bible school, it's a big deal for me to finish Bible school because remember my, my struggle with, with school? So I was feeling pretty good when I walked down the aisle and, you know, got my degree. I felt, you know, I felt like now, now, now we're somebody. Uh, at the same time, when I graduated Bible school, my, my brother, my brother after me, Aman, he got a touch from God. 
It was a really unusual touch because I challenged my parents with my school works, my school results. That's how they grew in their faith. But my brother, he was just a trouble, a troublemaker. My brother had, a, I know some of you know Aman, you say, are you serious? No, the, the, trouble, the troublemaker in our family was Aman. My parents always got called to school. They almost kicked, my, kicked him out of school two times. Uh, because he was just a baka rabbash, baka. He just, and so he's very, he's very mean, very nasty. Uh, uh, and, and one day, uh, he he closed the door in his bedroom and he says, "God, if you are real, uh, touch me now." And he said that he felt a hand come uh, and push him down and pin him on the bed like that. And he tried to get up and he couldn't. Now he's he, nobody else there. Just him and the hand. And he tried to get up and he couldn't. And he said, okay, okay, I give in, I believe, I believe. And he couldn't move. And he got filled with the Holy Spirit right there by himself. When he came out of that, he was like a different man. He was like on fire. Like night and day. But he just became on fire and everything was about the Lord. And he went to this school uh, in the U.S. that was close to where I had moved. And, and it was a, a, a Bible school that was a, a, a spirit-filled spirit-driven, spirit-agenda Bible school. It was very hot, very fire, praying in tongues, jumping, shouting, and everything. But they did not have any accreditation, so they did not have a, a proper degree. Like when you graduate, you don't get a degree. Hmm? Now that's a big deal for me because I have a degree, right? And you're going to go to school and walk away with something that has the same value of toilet paper. It just didn't fit for me. Plus, they're so hyper and excited all the time. So I would have to drop him off eh, and pick him up from school every day. And he's so excited, but I'm saying, but they don't have a degree. And then once you get into offense mode, everything that you see offends you. Hmm? Why do they do it like that? Why are they putting the colors over there? Why are they? And they're jumping while they have all this dysfunction going around. Everything. I, like, I, I, I couldn't stand these people. Um... They were tied in with this TV uh, station called TBN. I, I don't know if you, like TBN is still around, but uh, before uh, Paul and Jan Crouch passed away, Paul, Paul and Jan Crouch were the founders of TBN. Are, are any of you familiar with Paul and Jan Crouch? Yeah. Now, can we talk about this woman's hair? Huh? I mean, she's all, she went home to be with the Lord, but honestly, whenever I would see this woman on TV, I would look her at her and say, are you serious? Are you getting on international TV with your hair like that? Hmm? And with your eyelashes like that? Eh? Do we need prayer from you? Do we need ministry from you? Or do you... Who needs to be delivered from, from what? Can I get an amen? What was this woman thinking? I have no idea. So that was another one of my offense. You know, offense in my circle. The circle expanded. And uh, one day I got stuck. I went to pick my brother up uh, from, from uh, sc the school and uh, he wasn't there. There was a conference. I ended up sitting in the back just waiting for him. And you know, the same old things. And these people don't even have a degree. Don't look at me. Yeah? <laughs> Trying to preach the gospel. Do you even know that Bible that you're picking up? I do. I have a degree. Excuse me. And they're jumping and they're excited and they know Jesus and Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I say, I know Jesus. I have a degree. Hello. <laughs> and uh, what happened was the, 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 the preacher that day, he, he just, I don't know, for some reason, is anyone sick in here today? If you're sick, raise your hand. Just feel uh, sick, 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 raise your hand. And I just happened to have a cold that day. And I'm not a liar. Bible school taught me not to lie. Okay, I'm not feeling well. I have a little cold. And I was one of the few people. Okay, let's all pray. Touch, 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 touch. touch. Now, if you're healed and you feel a difference, raise your hand. I would say, Jesus. That's kind of embarrassing because I raised my hand. And if I say I did not get healed, that makes God look bad. So I don't want to lie, but I don't want to make God. I was kind of conflicted. But I said, okay, God, I'll just, just for your sake, I feel better now. You, in the back. I said, no, Jesus, I don't like these people. I see that hand, come forward. <laughs> and he called me in front of everybody. What's the matter with you? What happened? He was so intense. And I said, uh, God, heal me from cold. I feel bad. <laughs> I'm healed by the power of God. 
touch, 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 touch. I said, don't touch me. Stay away. <laughs> and and, and uh, I went back and took my seat. And I remember driving home that night. I never found my brother. And I went, went home and I told the Lord, God, I did not want to make you look bad in front of those people. Hmm? And I went as far as I could with these crazy people. You know and I know these people are crazy, right? Uh, and the Lord just kind of put in my heart, no, I got this. And that night, uh, well, it wasn't that night, somewhere in that, around that season, God just changed my heart to the point that I became such, I had such a compassion for these people. And, and I began to just really eat up and soak up. I, I, I knew it was the Lord when I stopped changing the channel for Jan Crouch. And I actually had a compassion for Jan Crouch. I said, Lord, where did that come from? And he began to show me how he sees her. Now, now, now this is the thing. I couldn't believe that the Lord had done this, but what he did was he opened, he helped me to overcome my offense so that I could step into faith, so that I could step into the power of God. Oh. Hallelujah. And, and, and I still have that. But now, this is uh, amazingly, this is not even to say that these people were perfect. In fact, after my brother left, there was a big crisis and the church, the school had to shut down because of the crisis. And I was asking the Lord after the crisis, how could you open my eyes through this ministry when they had such a crisis going on behind the scenes? And the Lord was just kind of showing me, you know, uh, it's not that they didn't have problems. But it's just that, that you have a log in your eye. Eh? The Bible says, first take the log out of your own eye, you hypocrite, so that you can see clearly to help the, the small speck of dust in your brother's eye. We all have something in our eye. That's not the issue. The issue is, are you first willing to look at yourself and to remove your offense, to remove your opinion? I'm preaching better today than you're saying amen. Because there's a great faith on the other side of your offense. There's a great power of God present to heal the sick on the other. In fact, the greater miracle is not your physical healing. The greater miracle is you overcoming offense. Hallelujah. So I don't know who this is for today, but, but uh, the power of God is present. And if the power of God is not present in, his li in your life, eh, take a lesson from, from, from me. Eh, overcome your offense today. Hallelujah. Remove the log in your own eye today. Hallelujah. Let the Lord minister to you in the place of your offense. Eh, hallelujah. Because there's a great blessing waiting on the other side. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah, let's all stand. Power of God is present today. The power of God is more present today, uh, right now, than it was at the beginning of the service. There is help for people today. There is visitation today. Don't go posting, he called me a dog. Go posting, my daughter has been healed. Hallelujah. So uh, that's why I believe uh, Proverbs tells us to, uh, uh, above all else, guard your heart. For it is the wellspring of life. Hallelujah.